Farm for Profit Podcast. Take a listen, have a blast. Farm for Profit Podcast. Learn about farming while having a laugh. Farm for Profit Podcast. Hey, listeners, welcome back to the Farm for Profit Podcast. You got Tanner sitting here. And David's here, and we're at the John Deere booth. That's right. We get to have a exciting conversation about innovation in agriculture, and I think that's one of the things that is uh, the important reason we're here with John Deere. We get to have these conversations, provide us the opportunity to share with our listeners some of the latest maybe tips, tools, techniques that are going to help their farm either make more money or protect them on the downside. And I'm excited here to uh, introduce who's become a friend of mine over the last couple of months, Mr. Billy Rose. He is chairman and CEO of a company that I think is going to become a household name within most of these farm households. Welcome to the podcast. Uh, Tanner, Dave, it's a real honor to be here today and talk about what we're doing and um, just kind of discuss how our battle cry even came about. <laughs> and we're talking Acre Shield today, but uh, uh, Bill, you've been in agriculture for quite a while now. Yeah. T- give, me, give me your backstory. How are you involved with agriculture even prior to Acre Shield? Uh, it, it's a it's a pretty fascinating story. My dad um, used to build hydraulic fittings and sell to John Deere. Okay. And the buyer lived in Dyersville, Iowa, and his plant was in Chicago, and he was fighting the union. And only as Iowa could do, he was explaining to the buyer in Dyersville, the John Deere buyer, hey, you know, we're a little behind because of the unions. We've got a little strike going on. And they said, why don't you come back next week? So my dad drives back, sits down, and he's looking at a cornfield and they said why don't you build your plant here we have the banker we have the tax benefit and we'll help actually help you get the ba- the plant built Fair Lo enough. and behold, he comes home and says, we're moving to Dyersville, Iowa. <laughs> <laughs> Ties back to Iowa. I thought you were going to say, lo and behold, he didn't build the manufacturing plant. He built a ball diamond. No, you know it. That came many years later. In fact, my bus ran past the ball diamond before there was a ball diamond okay. twice a day, every day. Truth be told, I maybe kissed my first girl and drank a beer on that road. There you okay. go. That's <laughs> awesome. Love it. That yeah. was that was Billy's field of dreams. Yeah, yeah. There, there is your tie yeah. to agriculture yeah. right there. Uh-huh. I'm gonna I maybe have to cl- claim the fifth now. Yeah, there <laughs> you go. Plead the fifth. <laughs> oh, that's cool. So yeah. that's that's the base. But then, how did you grow up and get into the business and entrepreneurial spirit that you're in? Yeah. So as the you. Know, as my dad was building the company, uh, the early 80s came up, and mm-hmm. the interest rates went to double digits. Yeah. So I'm graduating you know, from high school, and his advice to me was the following. Whatever you do, go to college and don't get into ag. But what had happened at the same time was a couple of our family, our friends with their family farms, they lost their farms. You know, double-digit gotcha. interest rates, it just ate them up. And I was scarred for life, and hmm. I didn't realize until... Probably 15 years later, after we built two successful companies helping farmers prive, you know, profit and, and thrive, that my wife said to me, you know, Billy, the reason that you have such passion is you were scarred from that, you know, your friends going bankrupt. And I've then committed my whole life to, hey, if it's not good for my friends in Dyersville, Iowa, and it's not going to help our mm-hmm. f- farming friends, you know, mitigate this risk, then why are we doing it? Yeah. And so um, thus went to college uh, at Iowa. Um, the first company we created was a company that provided um, operating loans. Okay. okay. We did about $140 plus million dollars worth of operating loans. We also did grain marketing advice. We also became, um, back in 1996, when the CRC revenue insurance came out, that was the first way to do a revenue protection policy. Gotcha. And we built that company, sold it to DTN, uh, woke up, said, it's t- I'm too young to retire. So what am I going to do next? Serial entrepreneur (laughs) (laughs) is what we have. Uh Uh-huh. Yeah. And with that, we said, what if if we could, like, improve the crop insurance delivery system? Okay. And so we went to the USDA. We laid out a plan. It was back in the internet days. And we said we could use technology, efficiencies, and we could pass a savings to the American farmer. USDA had great fortitude. They approved the plan. We saved American farmers over $50 million Hmm. just by using technology efficiencies. Awesome. Yeah. Wow. So we grew that company to 300 plus million, sold it to Farm Bureau Mutual. It took us, you know, 12 years. Yeah. But it was a hell of a run. Wow. So 
you have had this passion from the beginning as you built all these companies. Yeah. You're, you're trying to protect the margins of the producers. And in today's environment with these, you know, the bumper crop coming out, commodity prices at going to all-time low for a yeah. cycle that we don't even like to talk about, right? Right. I mean, I would rather just bury my head in the sand, but we can't. We have to deal with this, and we have to look at it and go, all right, I, I've got a good operation. I've got a 220 APH on my corn. You know, I'm doing everything right, but I'm not making money because of those commodity prices. So how are we going to do better? And we've always seen this issue, this problem called the yield gap. And, um, you know, at the right time, I'd like to talk to you about that yield gap. Oh, it's perfect time. Let's do uh, it. What, what is the yield gap? Sounds like a clever term for something. Yeah. What, what's the back meaning behind this? Yeah, so we named it this gap where crop insurance doesn't cover. Okay. It's the last 15% from 85 to 100 of your historical yield. Okay. Okay, so it's this gap. And you can't get any coverage, yet that gap is the difference between a profit and loss. Yes. It's the difference between going on a vacation or not. Yep. It's the difference between can my wife, you know, stop working in town and come work on the farm. Yeah. And so we said this problem, this universal problem for 160 million acres of corn and soy, how could we solve it? And then for years we couldn't. And one day we started doing all this seed trials across the Midwest, testing every variety and hybrid and on these seed trial plots where we had specialized four row planters and combines and we got the scientific data. And I have a question for you guys. If I planted 100 different varieties in the same field, okay, side by side, same plant date, same environment, same harvest date, mm -hmm. what do you think on a normal 200 APH corn field we might see in yield difference just in the top 30? I'm going to let Dave answer because I know the answer. Yeah. You know the answer? <laughs> yes, well, he does. Oh, that. man. I wouldn't <laughs> think it's, you wouldn't think it's more than 30 bushel an acre that if they're all in the same environment, same. But technology has so, come a long ways and hybrids have come so a long So 30 ways. bushel is 15% is what you're saying. Yeah. 15%. Okay. We were finding up to 20%. That's just in the top 30. There you go. So imagine if we could bring this information back to our, far our farming friends where they just drop a pin on their field and this, you know, AI algorithm yep. goes out, compares all the seed trials, brings them all in, grabs the same soil, same maturity zone, same practice, same rotation, whatever you're doing, and says, here is a list. I call it the David Letterman's top 10. Okay. okay? Here's a list that if you buy off of this top 30, you're going to improve your yields by that 15 to 20% and solve your yield gap. Hmm. Okay. So, you, Dave, your first field, right? You picked a yep. hybrid because one of your friends told you to plant that hybrid. We actually did two. So we're, we're doing a little okay. testing ourselves uh, on that. Uh, and it, that was based on the advice, of course, of course we have seed salesmen. And, right. and I relied wholeheartedly on the seed salesman that uh, I don't know what I'm talking about. He looked at soil samples, same as your maybe AI algorithm yeah. would. Um, and he went based off of what the book tells us. And the book tells us based on trials, just like what you're doing. But that's one or one company one variety you're you're covering the gap yeah so now take it to and let's say you're brand loyalist yep. let's say you're loving your decalb and your pioneer or yep. your wiffles we even allow you to sort by those I and do you. side by side comparisons and our new uh, yield optimizer which is the name of the tool that's coming out here in uh, 2.0 this fall we're going to allow you to take your favorite dave plug it in and do side by side comparisons to understand the why I'd be curious to know how many of current customers already have the correct one on there. So let's say uh, I drop a pin and you're like, oh, turns out you already have one of the top 10. Yeah, what, well, I, I, what percent of the population out there of acres are already on the right track? Because they've done it for years. I'm assuming that they got it somewhat right. Exactly. We don't know yet. Okay. We don't, okay. Because we, you know, we signed up a bunch of farms, a lot of progressive early adapters okay. and ROI farmers last year. Yeah. Okay. And we're uh, right now, I just talked to one of them on the way in this morning. Mm -hmm. He's running 255 plus. Okay. That's good. Okay. And he, he had nothing but a big smile. Uh -huh. And got he it. said, Billy, now work some magic and get those prices back to five yeah, bucks. No kidding. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. Your yield optimizer is going to have to become a price optimizer next. Yeah. Well, yes. And it might well, be a price deficit. Point. So think about this. Uh, the reasons, one of the reasons that our commodity price are lower is because we are so good at 
producing, right? Take us back. Uh, remember, we talked about that curve in yeah. hybrid selection. Okay, so if we go back to like 1950s, and we did not produce nearly the bushels that we produce today. Now, let's say we're already producing mm, 220 ish, and then you come along and you're like, oh, hey, knock me up to 250. All we did was do a better job, create more. Now we have that much carryover. Does the price go down? Well, it, it potentially would if everybody starts doing the same thing. Right. But that means everybody's got to be doing that. That's the same thing as this technology curve you've seen in yep. hybrid selection. But if we have 10% of the farmers running the yield optimizer, 10% of the farmers are going to have the yield advantage gotcha. based upon this model. But I, I did like your question. That What a great feeling you would have is if you dropped your pin, single hand, hold up their tool, yep. and all of a sudden your seed guy gave you the best hybrid option yeah. within within that how much more right. confidence do you have in that partner correct but let's add a twist to it okay okay you know i have 10 guys come down my lane every day 10 different salespeople, and they're all trying to say try my brand go with my hybrids trust me mm -hmm. okay does any one of them ever say i will guarantee up to five times what you pay me that if you don't get these yields i'll write you a check i don't know anybody that does Guess well, what? you must need to work on your seed dealer a little bit. Well, <laughs> apparently, <laughs> he did give me a pocket knife, though. So, right. by golly, I mean, I'm in. Yeah. <laughs> so, what we did is we worked with the world's largest reinsurance company. Okay. And when they saw the, our, our algorithm and saw the performance, and they back all these other crop insurance companies. Okay. We're not a crop insurance company. We're a commercial performance guarantee. All right. And we embedded this guarantee into the yield optimizer. So... You, we're saying to you, we're so confident that if you follow our tool advice and you don't yield over 100%, we're going to write you a check for up to five times what you paid us for the yield optimizer, which starts at 12 bucks up to $20, which is $100 an acre protection. So let me play devil's advocate yeah. for just a second. So we get a challenge, everybody's process being the uh, podcast interviewers here. What if I wreck my truck five times? Guess what? My insurance goes up. Sure does. Right? So let's say that, hey, it didn't work, and I made a claim and a claim and a claim, and now all of my friends made claims. What happens? Okay. Well, first, great question, but we have to change level set here. Okay. We look at your 10 years of historical production. Okay. So we benchmark off of your certified yields. Okay? Yep, so your so, crop insurance yep. APA. So it would have showed those car accidents where you may be having gotcha. a few I'm beers. I'm I just yep. started this <laughs> year. <I don't> know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fair enough. All right. right? So yep. we're going to use, you know, my average is different than your average. And we do it on a farm level. This isn't yep. not betting on the county. It's not going to Vegas, going black or red. Kay. Okay? This is based on your operation. So you might be running 180. You know, Tanner's over there running 240. I'm of at course. 210. I would be far exceeding. Yeah. Far, <laughs> exceed, far <laughs> exceeding what I'm doing. Uh -huh. So that eliminates that pot potential for fraud. Okay. Okay. And however, the unique thing is, you know, your dad's been doing things or your grandpa's been doing things a certain way, certain brands, certain numbers. And, you know, there's a lot of pressure on you, especially when you're under break even to perform. So why would you even change unless you had the confidence of a backstop? Yep. Okay? And that's what we provide. So uh, every farmer I know, we're here at uh, Farm Progress, right? And we're 2024. 20, every person here is looking for the next best thing that maybe helps them. But what I see farmers do, they're very hesitant to change anything. So I got this 80 acres over here, maybe even only 20 acres over here. How's that work with your program? Do I put my whole 5,000 acres in or do I put my 40? Yep. We, uh, we do have a requirement by county that you enroll all the corn and soy acres in that county. In you, that don't, county. you don't have to give us all. But if you're okay. in one county and you run 1,000 acres, you can put 1,000 acres into the program. Yep. The concept there is that we then true up, and we, it's called an enterprise unit. We add up all of your acres, all your expected production against your benchmark, and it's very simple. Were you above 100%? Get this. We give a dividend, like Farm Credit yep. gives a patronage dividend. Yep. We give a dividend for 10% of what you paid us if you're over 100%. Because you won and we won, right? Mm -hmm. You tried our seed selector. It clearly got you results over 100%. And we're saying, good job, and here's our way of giving back to you. Yeah, it's finding it hard to lose. I mean, mm -hmm. I understand this is a cost service that our listeners are going to, if they're interested in using, it's going to be an additional cost. But... It comes with that backstop, the ability to guarantee that yield gap, 
And also, you just talked about a dividend. So just like you said, if I wanted to test and, and maybe switch hybrids on a field, I now have the data. And maybe I do more than 20 acres and I put it into 80, which ends up being a better investment for me. And I end up doing it in 300 of my 1,000 acres because I've got the test plot data. I want to go back to how you talked about the test plots because that's the data that's going to matter. Dave says it all the time. Data is the currency, and you can't have funny money when you're trying to make decisions. No, and a lot of people don't realize to do test plots correctly. I mean, we grew up and we always did our little test plot too. But when we have a protocol and the standards that actually the large, largest seed companies follow when they do their test plots. So we have the specialized software, the equipment, the staffing. We have close to $5 million worth of equipment just mm -hmm. here in Iowa running those seed trial plots throughout Iowa and the surrounding states. And that allows us to do a true side-by-side -side comparison. The best way to test a hybrid is put the two next to each other. Gotcha. And say, which one produced? So let me challenge your process one more time. And that is, as a farmland sales guy, uh, I look at soil maps all yep. day long. Okay. And so I'll have a silty clay loam over here. And then I'll have a Webster and a little bit of Nicolette here and a little bit of this. And so what John Deere does for us is variable rate. So I can do variable rate. I can plant different uh, hybrids in certain areas. You're testing this on a small scale. You have a four row combine or four row planter. And uh, I got a combine here that's uh, doing 12 rows at a time. And we're bringing in, you know, thousands and thousands of bushels. Can this scale or is your sample data too small that you were only on the silty clay loam. You never ventured over here into the Nicolettes and you never ventured into the sandy clay loam. Yep. How's great, that work? Great question. We're running 250 plots across the Midwest. Okay. So the algorithm goes out and goes sandy to sandy, loam to loam. Loam to loam. And let's compare those results and then let's organize it very easy for the farmer just to look at the list and then they can stress test it. They could change the maturity ranges. Let's say I have a late planting, right? And they're watching, you know, how many times have you been in right prior to planting and the seed company calls up and says, you know, I'm really sorry, Tanner, but that number we sold out. But trust me, I got a, I have a really good number here. <coughs> <coughs> really good number. This happened to me. This oh, year. yeah. Where'd you go? Where'd you go? <laughs> so, you know, I want to trust you. But let me just look at my yield optimizer real quick and go, how come you didn't recommend this one of your particular brand? Right. See, we have all the brands and all the hybrids. And here's a question I have for you. What do you think the shelf life of soybean hybrid is? Uh, two years. years. Two years. Yep. So that means every two years that I have to trust my seed company and seed dealer to get recommend what's the newest, greatest. Okay. Right? Imagine if you had pre-commercial data. Mm. I didn't know you had access mm. to that. I don't know. You know, it's just good things to think about. So what about this? Um, so we have an algorithm, okay? So we have an algorithm. If this, then that. If this soil type, we know that our database says that. If this, then that. But there's a whole lot of variability. So now uh, this one's on a 9% grade. This one's not. This one's pattern tiled. This one's not. Uh, this one is in Indiana, not Iowa, and they get this much less rain than this. Right. There's got to be other factors to your if this, then that formula. So in your algorithm, are there other factors that you can share? Great question. Sure, Ken. We actually, down to the field level, have 20 years of the weather data okay. pinpointed on every field. Okay. Gotcha. So right away, that's going to tell us what type of maturity zone he's in, what type of you know historical pattern, and you can overwrite it by changing your factors and just say, look, we're we're looking at a drought, so I'm I'm anticipating a dry year versus you know we're looking at ex excess moisture. Maybe you're, you're more interested in the racehorse versus the workhorse. Gotcha. Maybe you want to compare those two together. We actually have a report that after the seed ranking, then you can mine in to understand the why. Okay. The why is very, you know, I'm supposed to believe this algorithm, right? Yep. I'm supposed to believe AI. I'm supposed to believe data. I want to, but the why that we're now explaining about rotation, and environmental, pH levels, whatever it might be, helps you get a little more comfortable with the recommendations. I was about to say, if we have data and we're, we're a data forward farmer, and so I already have 10 years worth of records, but not just APH. I have, I use this this hybrid this year, this hybrid the next year, this hybrid, here's what I've put on. Um, how much does that help your algorithm? Because now you know what I produced from uh, this 80-20, uh, whatever yeah. it was, corn. 
do you, does that also go into the formula yes. that that uh, the the past data? I, I'm guessing you can sharpen that pencil. Oh yeah, we have okay. 15 million acres over the last 10 years of every yield. Gotcha. Okay, by field. Yeah. So that goes into us helping establish a benchmark. What's fair? Like, what have you been? If you didn't change any of your practices, you you should come in around your average. Gotcha. Yep. E- excluding environmental impact. Yeah, that's the fun part. When we got to talk to you down Tech Hub Live, Corey was was trying to shoot holes in it too. We're both very good at, at challenging. Dave's almost <laughs> better than we are at challenging the process. And so far, I appreciate the answers that you've given because one of the things that we were talking about is how wet this spring was. Oh, mercy! Oh and if you were you were planning on planting corn and it just didn't end up working for you and you had to go get a bean hybrid, just like you said. Seed dealer might not have access to all the bean hybrid choices you did at the beginning of the order well, season. And I even switched to my replants. I got a shorter right. shorter window for replants because uh, my seed dealer recommended it, you know, yeah. uh, putting it out there. But all right, so we are farm for profit. Yep. Amen. How much does this cost? Great question. So, and we actually built a new business model. Okay. okay? We are not insurance. We are a commercial warranty. And by, with those operating under those regs, we were able, because remember, I built two insurance companies. Sure. We were able to save 50% of our overhead. Okay. Now, did we pocket that? No. We go back to our roots in Dyersville, Iowa. When I go back to talk to my friends, Mm -hmm. it's like, look, Billy, what's this cost? We start off at $12 up to $20 okay. for up to $100 protection per acre. That's just amazing. I'll now, s- when you say compare it again because yep. that is amazing. Yep. You can you know, go to AcreShield's website. We work through distributor, trusted distributors, which are crop insurance agents, bankers, seed dealers, agronomists, okay. anyone that you know, has a good farm gate relationship. And podcasts, of course. Oh, of course. Jeez. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And Your trusted advisor since five years ago. Since five years ago. <laughs> You're in good hands with all this yeah, You got all right, it. Let me show you what that looks like. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> so it um, starts at $12 okay. for this year. Goes up to $20 with a 5X protection. If, you're, if your 100% APH even falls 3%, you get your money back. Yeah. I, well, look at the risk. That's zero risk almost. So if you had customers pairing this with different crop insurance guarantee levels? Sure. Because the crop insurance tanner, as you know, ends at 85%. You can't get a higher level than 85%. So from 85 to 100, quite frankly, you're exposed. We specialize in covering that risk mitigation from 85 to 100. So with that $12 that you buy for the seed selector comes the embedded performance protection. Here's a question that I get often asked uh, from people not in agriculture. You guys are getting uh, uh, paychecks in the mailbox, okay? So you just said that they are taking a 15% risk from uh, 85 to 100%. If you buy 85%. Yeah, if you buy 85%. Let's let's pretend I'm a a contractor. I'm building houses. I have no insurance to say that I'm going to make any money building this house. Let's say I'm a guy that owns an auction company. I have no protection. Why do farmers get 100% protection and the rest of the world just has to fake it or make it? You know, I I have to say I'm very proud of the crop insurance. In 1981, it was privatized. It was a mess when the feds were running at 100%. It was about $200 Today, it's almost um, $18 billion. Holy smokes. Okay. Okay. And yes, you and I as American taxpayers are subsidizing the cost of crop insurance up to that 85 by 50% for farmers. Mm -hmm. So it's a very smart buy. Okay. Now... We can't open up a donut shop and buy an insurance policy no, that's, that's going to guarantee you the revenue, right? <laughs> guarantee me the Krispy Kremes are going to be good. Yeah. Right? But the beauty is that you know, it is, this is available to every farmer. I've been on a 20-year a mission to take advantage of the crop insurance, forward price your crop when you okay. can, lock in your profits, take the basis off the table. This is a penny business. It needs to be run like a penny business. Awesome. They I'm not saying it. I don't like it. I mean, yeah. I don't like it just yeah. <laughs> in terms no. of... But it's there, and it's not going away. The farm right. bill is just going to actually maybe bring out greater um, subsidies. So, Tanner... Uh, uh, I want to keep staying on the crop insurance topic for my next question, that... We could buy up to 85%. Have you had clients that are buying lower crop insurance and coverage? And use you for more. Because of this being able to partner with it. Are they able to buy down to 70 or 75%? Yeah, that is their decision. They can buy it. At, you know, it starts at 65. Most guys um, in Iowa or the Midwest buy 75 to 80, a lot of 85s. We are covering what I call like AFLAC, the gap, you know, that 85 to 100 that no one's covering. 
but we're doing it smart. We're saying, hey, we're going to give you the inside knowledge on the best performing hybrids. Yep. So when so I could potentially, I know I keep cutting you off, you're, I you could potentially save money, drop to 75%. All day long. Might still only have 10% risk. A little band. Out there. Right. But I've insured another 25 on top of that. In a maybe or 15. Or fi- I'm 15. sorry, 15 right. on top of that. Which is higher, lower closer cost. to the flame, right? Because yep. you're closer to 100. Yeah. Yeah. What, uh, so that could be a way for our listeners to save a little money and not give up not a give lot up. of risk yeah. protection. I like to be net neutral, right? I'm just gonna. I'm only going to spend my X dollars per acre, but I'm going to maybe spend it differently. Yep. What to, um, from an egg lending standpoint? So Tanner, you've been in that game. What uh, I, they're always looking for security. They want no no uh, possibilities that we can uh, crash and burn. So oftentimes, even lower commodity prices, they lower what your balance sheet is and what stuff is worth to make sure they're protecting their backside. Does this affect their lending game on the operations side? Absolutely. If you can guarantee revenue, you're going to get credit for it. If you've already got bushels sold, I'm going to give you the sold price versus the current market price, whether the price is higher or lower. At least that's the way uh, I would operate to make sure that we had an accurate depiction of what your crop was valued. I mean, I just sold a farm and and even the lending institution on that one wanted uh, to make sure that we had a lease agreement, not with the the guy who bought it, but with the the tenant. They wanted to make sure that they got it before the guy guy who bought it, which I was just blown away with because it hasn't happened in the past. But on this one, it sure sure did. So There's probably going to be a lot of financing questions, Billy, coming up here in the next six months. They're protecting their backside. Having some acres shield protection is going to be beneficial in those conversations. But right. the, then the, we go back to car accidents. Are we going to pay out like every farmer in the world and then does the company crash? Just said, then they all win. Right. And when you look at, you know, there's just a, when you really look at your mis- risk mitigation, the things you can control, the things you can't control. We can't control the weather, right? We can't mm-hmm. control the, your seed selection. All right. You can't control your fertility programs. You can control certain things like that. What we look at is like, all right, I need a little hedge on the things I can't control. We're providing a little hedge on that yield performance. And right now, with the prices being so low, if I'm not popping 110 of my historical yield with this bumper crop out there, I'm below break even. Yeah. That's you know, if I'm renting ground. Especially, yeah. So one other thing. Our listeners, and then I'm done with questions, <laughs> are God, small easy. and yep. big. So we got big guys, and I wholeheartedly see this definitely work for the big guys. If you farm five, ten thousand acres, there, we we always say that you're farming more acres, you're farming uh, more expensive equipment. The margins just got tighter, and uh, there's more risk. Now you're taking the risk out of it for them. So for the big guys, it makes sense. How about the guy that farms two hundred acres all day long? We do not discriminate. We built this program. He still has to make a seed decision maybe he's working in town but he's still running that farm okay he has exposure he can buy the same program for the same price okay and get the same Got intelligence it. and protection yeah i i've had this conversation with billy a couple of times and Corey's had it once before so i appreciate your perspective on trying to make sure our listeners who get their first exposure to acre shield have a good base knowledge as far as this goes but i've known billy longer than just Acre Shield, and he's constantly innovating. So I want to know what's down the pipe. Yeah. yeah. What's coming down the uh, road? This this is exciting, actually. Uh, we can't disclose everything, but I can tell you this: we've been asking every one of our farm customers. You know, today we're doing seed trial testing. What would you prefer us to do next? We're giving them three choices: mm. seed treatments, fungicides, or biologicals. You're just sharpening the pencil. You're talking. But I, what we want to provide unbiased raw performance data okay okay what do you think they're picking as the and it's a two to one between what do you think i know the answer what do you think and give me the give me the seed treatment yep right which has a big impact on yield uh biologicals and fungicides oh man it's got to be biologicals it is. And why do you think it is that? Uh, just because that's the most buzzword I've heard for the past year and a half. <laughs> right. So if all the industry is going that way, it's what's top of mind, and that that's what's top of mind. And what it, has the least amount of research associated uh, with unbiasedly it. Unbiasedly associated yeah. with it. And, and you know, we want to believe, okay, we want to believe all, all the biological companies, and there's some great ones out there. But I'm here to tell you, there might be a couple that are not great. But if there was a 
company out there that was independent, that wasn't selling biologicals, that could actually start. So we applied for our license, okay. and we're going to do biological testing next year. Awesome. That was hands down the most requested for us to start doing next. I think we need to. We read. get it. It's the most requested of us. The we're number of companies that want to advertise with fun for profit that are a biological company by nature. But there's we're lots of them. It's I know. Oh yeah. Yeah, we've turned them all down. It's we're going to rename Farm Progress Show. I'm making the statement right here. It's a million ways to spend money. Is what <laughs> it is. So there is I a mean, million. I thought you were going to call it the Farm for Profit Show. No, no there, no, there is a million ways to spend money at this show right here, and everybody's claiming that they can help me somehow yeah. as a farmer, from decision making to uh, profitability, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And we get the opportunity to interview a lot of them, yeah. which is pretty fantastic. It sounds like you have a uh, taken the risk out. Yeah, you can never remove all the risks because yep. you always have the cost of what of the risk vehicles that are sunk into it. But what, what we're t really trying to do is like, we kind of like being married. You can never take the risk <laughs> out of that. I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> Be smart here, Dave. Be smart. I know. <laughs> they take 60% of your assets mm -hmm. nowadays. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but on a serious note, I'm really proud also of our team. This is a team that's been with me close to 15 to 20 years. They've got, they've built, we've built great ventures. Um, I've been recognized as Iowa entrepreneur and many accolades. It's not because of me. It's because of the team behind me and what we're able to do and help our customers out. Perfect. Two more questions. He's going to give the final I one. Got four questions to I, go. You nope, said you were. We're ready to go. <laughs> no, he's warming I, it up. <laughs> I'm, follow, I'm following his timeline, which I don't normally do. But here's the deal. What are we missing? So we've asked you. I've challenged your process. There, is, there, is there more to this that our listeners need to know that you want to tell them? Um, you owe it to yourself to check this out. Okay. Now, uh, bankers, um, crop a insurance agents, uh, seed dealers, anyone that you have, you know, we're signing them up as distributors. Full disclosure, we do pay them up to 15% commission. So if you bring in your um, your crop insurance agent, he owes you a steak dinner. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. But these guys also give, that, give, our, give our farming friends a little more vetting because they look at Acre Shield. They go, oh, you're backed up by am best a plus reinsurer superior that's the best rating you can get in the world okay you know so they do some of that due diligence that i always like my stockbroker to do mm -hmm. and that's what they'll do and then at the same time they can make a commission by helping their farming friends solve this universal yield gap problem so are you looking for more of those partners i am I'm looking for more distributors. Uh, we're signing them up every day. We don't want to lay three distributors in the same little town. You know, we, we're looking for geographic spread. We operate in all 15 Midwest states. So now I, I've come up with another one. Good. So i got to go there. Well, you said so, two and you so, asked one. So every, well, you were going to ask the last one, <laughs> see, uh, the payoff. But all crop insurance agents get the same product. So right. it's really about relationships. It's really about who you trust and where you go because I get the same rate everywhere we go. If I had to choose between one that had Acre Shield and one that didn't, now does it set you apart as a crop insurance agent? Well, considering you're talking to a man who built and sold a crop insurance company, uh, I yep. think he knows that's a competitive advantage. <laughs> I think it is. It's a great way to differentiate your offering. Yep. And what I like is we make our distributors the heroes to the villain called Yield Gap. So we're trying to s help our farming friends solve that problem and we at the same time our distributors get to be the heroes to deliver the uh, solution yeah. you guys need to remember that sign years ago it was the yield bump they had oh, bump, right. bumping hands we need like an image for yield gap like <laughs> yeah how could we do that <laughs> appropriately i don't know uh-huh uh-huh yeah. Well, Billy, this is something that you and I have talked about doing for quite a while, and I'm glad we got to do it in the uh, environment that we did. The yeah. energy here is, is second to none. Uh, whether the audience sat and stayed forever or it's 90, what are we sitting Five here? degrees yep. outside? Yeah, not quite 90 <laughs> yeah. degrees yet. Still warm. <laughs> so put you literally on the hot seat, and we're going to do that with our last question. We, we like to frame up and try to put a summary together to help our audience with things that they're struggling with, and one of that is knowing that they are doing okay as a family man or just in life in general. So how do you juggle the activities of work and personal life? Um, I used to have a shirt that my wife gave me, you know, 20 years ago when I was getting out of balance and it was called balance. And every now, now and then, you know, building a venture, you're all in. She would give me the balance shirt. But subsequently, we've now have changed that word from balance to circular. 
And so what I mean by circular is that, look, she knows that it requires 80 hours a week. Mm-hmm. It requires 80 hours sometimes when you're in harvest or planting, okay? But I also come back and give back to the family. I still believe in, um, I have date night with my wife. Uh, we just became empty nesters. The last one went off to Iowa a week ago. Libby's off and running. And, you know, we're going through that, that change ourselves. But it does take a really good partner to support you in a venture. Mm-hmm. And I'm blessed to have a wife like and that. That's why this question doesn't have the word balance in it. Yeah. We've chosen to use the word juggle because right. I don't feel it needs to be 50-50. No, it does not work. And it might be 60-40 for one person and flip to 60-40 for the next. So See, it's you only juggle two. You got two in the air at the same time. I got, I'm got. i juggling like 45. I mean, there's like there's a bunch in the air because I only got two hands. That's so. right. <laughs> but you, you, do, you, do you ever, let me ask you guys a question. Do you feel like this is work? Not today. Not today. Not today. No, no, sure, it's hot, and you know, but look at the fun people we have met, and t- and yeah. I've seen a bunch of old friends, met a bunch of new people. Th- this is what we live for. Plus, Tanner buys me lunch, so I mean, mm-hmm. I, mean well, like, I am getting hungry. Like, I'm ahead I am of the getting game hungry. here. I'm, I'm, I'm net positive <laughs> for the day, so I think there's a beer later, yeah. and it's on his well, credit card. Yeah. So yeah. we'll be at the same time. <laughs> All right, we're there. We're there. <laughs> That's good. So thanks again for hanging out with us. If they want to learn more about you guys, how do they do that? They can go to acreshield.com. They can call our 800 number, which is you know, 888-650-CROP. Okay, uh, and we encourage you know people to give us a jingle. We'll send them the information. We'll walk you through how it works. Um, and the only thing that we ask is one simple thing: tell a friend. You know, help someone else out. Yeah, that's the same thing we ask of our listeners. We appreciate them at all times. They can always send us guest ideas, just like you, Billy, and uh, we encourage them to tell their friends. So. Thanks again for hanging out with us. We appreciate it. It's an honor, guys. Thank you. Keep up the good work. Yeah. Yeah.